Hi, YouTube. How's everybody doing? I'm having a pretty good day. I have uh, turkey in the oven. I made stuffing to go along with it. Um, so that's, and mashed potatoes, gravy, that type of. So, yeah, that'll be great. Um, had a pretty good day today. Um, oh, I'm going to tell you a story about um, why I'm going to find a special parable for a friend on Christmas Day. Um, actually, for a whole family that I love, families. Um, it goes back. 45 years ago, almost 46 years ago, I met these farm kids, and um, it was uh, Dee and Terry and Bruce, the oldest girl and two of her little brothers, and um, we remained friends through the years, and um, when I moved up around the area where they were, um, I watched D. She got married, and well, actually, their first date was at my house, and so like even her husband knew um, me, and I got to know him. And they were dairy farmers. They had a um, really nice little dairy farm, pretty close to where I live now. And then I watched them raise their family and watched um uh kids well their daughter um went to her uh bridal shower the wedding was far away and i didn't want to be driving home at night so um but yeah i got to watch kids grow up and have babies and my friends become grandparents and the couple of boys, they got on meth and weren't doing very good for a while. But the um, one, Terry, he's doing better now. And my friend Sherry, they were over, oh, a few months ago. So, I mean, I have friends that pop in and out. But nobody that I'm really close to because of the choices and the things that happen in everybody's lives. So, anyway, back to D and Dave, they got married, had these kids, grandkids, everything. Um, one day, Dee come home from shopping, and they had, in the meantime, lost their dairy farm because um, the prices of milk went down, and they just couldn't afford everything. So Dave went back to doing carpentry work. Um, his father and him used to do when he was a real young person, like in his teens. So, um, their kids grew up, mine grew up, um, some moved away, but the youngest one of theirs was still in the home, and he started doing meth and drinking and that type of thing. He was, um, let me see, I don't want to misspeak, I'm going to say he was... 19 or 20 somewhere in there and Dave if you're watching I'm sorry I I'm sorry I forgot how old he was um okay well Dee come home and uh found her son laying in the yard he had shot himself with a shotgun well she went in the house and um oh my god <laughs> Dave came home, he's like, uh, what's the matter with uh, Skyler? And he's like, uh, she, he shot himself. Well, they think it might have been like bad meth or um, something like that. Um, they don't know. Or I, I, guess, I guess that's what they found out. But... Um, so when I say, like, I had a kid of mine <clears throat> try to commit suicide and get locked up for, um, you know, uh, basically losing his mind, you know, for a while. And 
he did get help and he's doing better now. But I mean, so when I say I'm like, I uh, was out here looking for people to preach to my sons and uh, be maybe a, a, an example to uh, my estranged husband, things like this, and my other son, that I know the type of person and personality that they would listen to for that word then that's exactly what I need. So um, today I was in the kitchen making stuffing. In the meantime, Dave and Dee split up. And Dave come out, okay, I'll go back to after their son died. They were together for a while, but they broke up. And um, Dave started drinking really bad. And he come over here. He was almost half dead. We've done this a lot. I've done this a lot in my life because people know where to go when they're really, really d desperate and down. And um, I started putting out stuff like I think Doug had some uh, pickled fish. And I had made pickled eggs and then different kind of cheeses. And I had homemade jerky and different things like that. Oh, and some nuts and little crackers and stuff, just like a smorgasbord. Oh, and cottage cheese. And so him and Doug sat there and they had all these snacks and pretty soon David ate something and you could tell he hadn't like eaten for a long time. And um, yeah, he's crying about his boy. Who wouldn't be, right? And um, I did pray for him, and I told him to remember that his son was with God, and he will be with him again. And I knew all these kids had been raised Christian, you know, and I knew all of them walked away from the church. Because, when you know, when we see a type of phoniness in a church that isn't out in the world, it turns us off. And that happened to a lot of, lot of people. You know, even back in the day, we it wasn't that we didn't have God in our hearts. It's just like life was rough and we had nowhere to turn or anybody to turn to. So we had like little groups of good people here and there that, you know. But with all this that happened and that, yes, their marriage failed. And um, they were together for, I'm going to say, 25 years. Um well, okay, um, they lost their place now, and um, Dave stopped by today when I was making stuffing, and he told me that he had quit drinking, but he felt like, um, and had found people to hang that believe in God, and um, instead of some of the other people that were starting to gather around him in his drinking um, sorrows of his child and using that to try and take him down, he felt like people were trying to get him to drink again. And um, so he popped in here today to wish us a Merry Christmas and... Um, I think to show us he was doing good too and he said he was happy I said I know I know it's hard when uh, you're hurting because of your kid but he said I am happy he said I'm doing better he said I'm gonna spend uh, Christmas with one of my sons and um, uh, he's a grandfather too and um, I told him about my YouTube channel and he asked me if I would find a parable about for his son for on Christmas Day so him and his family can sit and watch that. So I will be doing that. I will definitely find something that, um, some words for God. I'll say a prayer, search my heart, and find the most beautiful thing that I can find, maybe a, more than one will fit that situation because that's rough. Um, the drugs, that's why I became a, a drug counselor and a TMA even after being a nurse because um, I really have a passion um, 
to help people clean up off of drugs. I've done it a lot and I'm good at it <laughs> because I go into their nutrition too. And that's when I was working there, the um, head nurse and I worked under her um, with the care of the guys. Um, I tried to get in with the women's um, treatment center around me, but they didn't have an opening. So, but anyway, so some of these guys were pretty rough, but <laughs> whatever. But um, we were trying to get this facility to realize that these guys needed vitamins and the state didn't want to pay for that. And me and this nurse um, really felt that it was a really big deal. And if they did have families or any kind of finances, we would get those kind of things to them and that and um god these people and the state they were pushing back at us like their nutrition wasn't a part of their health care you know like a vitamin wasn't as important as a pill you know and we were pushing like these men are sick they're malnutrition they they um will think better and do better in society the quicker we can get their health back underway the more likely they'll be able to think clearly and do things good for themselves. And a lot of them had families, that type of thing. So, um, yeah, but our state, we finally did get it going. But, and that facility owner, she, she did not want to pay for any vitamins out of her pocket for these men, you know, and she got funding for the state for this crap. And it was starting to really peeve the head nurse and I. So, yeah, we, we kept going into meetings and kept on their butts until we made it happen, you know. But, yeah, little fight story there, <laughs> you know. I fought the state a lot. I fought them uh, about uh, building our... Well, I, I'm into... Um, uh, birds like as far as songbirds uh flying into glass and the whole stadium in the, um minneapolis for the vikings is made out entirely out of glass and it's right in the flight path of the songbirds that come from south america to the north every year and just like in chicago in different buildings that are tall that are glass like that um like we have an IDS building too here that's just like freaking glass and a lot of them are downtown now. And it's disgusting because songbirds are dying because of it. If anybody's ever had um, birds fly into your windows, you know how sickening that is, you know. And I looked for these decals you can buy. They're like magnetic sticky things. And I know like um, I had some Christmas ones that were more gooey that I took some of them and put them up to. But I have like uh, wind chimes I put in my windows in the summer too to keep the um, noise going. But I'm still looking for them decal stickies to stick in my windows so um, the birds won't fly right through them thinking it's an open air space, you know? So, yeah. But yeah, so I decided to wear gray because it's not a symbol of death, but it's not completely white. It's just kind of the way this world is right now for my friend Dave, that's why I wear gray. Not because I'm in between light and dark, because our bodies are, you know. So. And for the young man that um, um, wondered about my integrity because you spelt my name wrong and um, thought I ridiculed you with my little LOL, I was lightening up the situation of being angered by your lack of respect for me so um it was a little dig a little stark but that's how I roll because you rolled there first but then your apology was more like an excuse instead of taking it for what it was when you came here to my channel so 
either we'll leave it at that or you can carry your disrespect somewhere else and we'll both be cool with that. Okay? Thanks for being here for real, though. Because I do love people. But my apologies don't have a but after them <laughs> or before them. <laughs> For real. So we'll just leave it at that for today and see what tomorrow brings. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine was talking about the quietness and, um, yeah, I had times where Quiet was all I wanted, and I had a lot of it, like, um, lots, lots of time with quiet, and that's always a good thing. In fact, when, even during the day when I go outside and I'm out there and all I can hear is, like, um, well, the birds don't sing too much when it's cold out, but... I can see them like flying around or doing their things and just being out there and things are quiet. And that's always nice. Yeah. It's a good way to be able to think is to make sure you keep quiet time for yourself. It is really important. You know, just to sit down. I used to tell my kids it's meditation time, you know, to make it sound fancy, but it's actual prayer when you can sit and um, be with your own thoughts. I've noticed the wicked, they don't do too good with sitting quiet with their own thoughts, you know. Or maybe they don't realize that all that noise and commotion is causing some of the wickedness, you know. I know for me that's true. I'll just say it like it is. If I'm listening um, to, like, System of a Down screaming, why do they always send the poor? Why don't the president fight the war? And he's screaming, ah! You know, um, if I listen to that all day, I'll probably feel like that at the end of the day, you know? So, yeah. I have some things on my playlist, um, actually making a point that are a little bit radical, but I like about every kind of music, but for preferably something that brings a good feeling to my mind, even if there's kind of a radical band, it might have a good message. Like I have this uh, one album, it's a German album called Walmstein. The second um, song in it, I can I, I um, learn how to read southern dialect of German to be able to translate the Gutenberg Bible into English so I could understand the German words for the time of like the W, what this means in the times, and um, in times. So to be able to understand enough German where um, if encountered with that situation, but I really needed to understand a lot of different languages when I was reading them so I could look up words so they can be used against me, that type of thing, so, literally. But, so, Rammstein has, a, the second song on there is about a soldier when he's dying, and his buddy, and they're in the trenches, and um, the one is crying because he's wounded and he's dying, and the other one's wondering what they're doing there, and why, um, People fight wars, and they're screaming about it, and that literally is what that is about. But, and my son, my oldest son, introduced it to me 
and because he liked the music and I didn't like any of it until I heard that second song and I went back and I thought they they're literally talking about um, running up to the trench his friend gets shot as they're jumping into it and he's dying in his arms wondering why they're there and then that's where God comes in so when I had that in my mind and I went back and listened to it again it was like yeah I can tolerate this because I understand the message now. But at first it's like, no, no, not here, you know. But So that's why that album is down there um, in case my oldest son pops over, which he has. His wife told me he watches my videos. And um, so that's down there for that memory because we were having some pretty good times in life when he was kind of a younger man. And I just want him to remember that I'm always here for him no matter what. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, so back to Dave. He went in and visited with them because, like I said, they're very first date was actually at our house and um, uh, Doug and Dave were talking cars and things and Dee and I were uh, um, mind dancing to achy breaky heart <coughs> and cracking up um, out by my picnic table and stuff and just good times and it was so cute she had on uh, uh, cowboy boots with a skirt and um, I think I had shorts on or something. It was summertime and they were goofing off. But it, and her skirt would furl, and it was just the funniest day. How adorable! But yeah. So and they were falling on in love on that day, you know, them days. And <laughs> so it was really a really nice day. <clears throat> but that's that's an honor. In, in a lot of respects, when your friend would come to introduce you to somebody she's dating, um, you know, that they respect you that much. Like, this is where we're going to go tonight, you know. That tripped me out, <laughs> you know. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. actually too and every once in a while they'd pop in but they were hanging around some kind of rougher people that they would tolerate in their life that I couldn't and so I used to go over their house once in a while and and would like every few years or so or like one year I just called her um, about a year before her son died and um, made a picture Nick lunch and we went fishing um, that summer a couple times. I took her fishing and um, it was fun. And uh, you know stuff like that off and on but not a whole bunch because of the people that she hung with and you know like her brothers um, had some real shady meth head baloney going on in their lives and I didn't want to be around it and a lot of drinking and partying and it's like phooey you know I love you guys but later alligators you know <laughs> so so in that respect it was really sad because um that's what I mean like I letting people go I let a lot of people go you know so I had to you know I couldn't be around crap you know, and that was pretty sad. It's really hard to do. And uh, her brother lives pretty close, and he's still on drugs, her littlest brother. And her second little brother um, lives pretty close, and him and his girlfriend are drinking themselves to death to this day. I try to. Well, I, I asked him one time, um, 
I know you were raised with God in your heart. Did you forget that? And he puts his head down. I go, don't look down at the ground. I'm talking to you, you know. And he looked at me, and it's like, you know, a bunch of shame. And it's like, you know, whatever, because these people know me really good, <laughs> you know. So, but I brought Cherry in, and he went to visit Doug a few months ago in the shop. And um, I showed her a bunch of youtubers i watched and stuff and um she did think a walmart bunny video was funny but see that's not the one that i liked i liked one where he was uh frustrated with uh um people um not understanding his viewpoints in life and uh i could just see um sorrow so when I see sorrow in somebody's eyes before they start fighting because everybody's turning on them like dogs but um, when I literally see sorrow in somebody's eyes um, that's the video that made me want to be a friend to somebody and want to have them um, show that part of their selves to my kids my husband you know that type of thing so and i say it's strange but i've never um wandered even out of my mind even though i gave him a letter of divorcement i may not like his actions but i don't hate him but i don't want to be um associated with that and so i do distance myself from people because i have to you know so that's the way that is. But let's see what else is going on. I wrote down a couple things. Oh, yeah, parables I was going to look up. and Yeah, I was going to just touch on again that Christ is rising out of the sea, with, sea within mankind. And so is the darkness. Um, that's the way it is. It really is. And it's uh, literally the same amount of energy on both sides. But um, God does win out because uh, although the sea is light and dark, he is light and that gives us more power above all that. So they think they can get together and finagle this and that and all Pammy this and that, but they forget that the sciences are of God and anything we think is of him, you know, and uh, good or bad, he knows it all. So I don't know why they think they can uh, play with him but you know it's just like a, a baby saying I'm born now and I'm smarter than you and I don't need you anymore so goodbye you know and I'd be like okay kid bye bye <laughs> you know but God doesn't do that lucky us right um, but I was thinking you know do you humble yourself for others and God or like just God you know Just wonder. I don't always humble myself to people. I start that way. But it may not end up that way. Because I'm not like uh, turning any more cheeks for people. You know. To smack on me. So. But I'm not vile. So you're lucky like that. I might swear at you. But you know. Don't push that on me. Because <laughs> uh, I'll give it right back to you. It'll be your shame, not mine. So That's the way that is. I don't play like that. You know. Yeah, I told Doug, uh, somebody asked me about the bridal chamber, and I said they'd have to pray about that. And he asked me what color it was, and I said, well, I don't know, gold. <laughs> you know, and he's like, um, maybe for that uh, red and he ran across some uh, videos and showed me some stuff that I was like wow okay 
um, somebody that said they communicated with him when he wouldn't communicate back <laughs> and won't. He said uh, he doesn't care to, and that's why, because of the um, bullshit conversation that goes along with that. He spotted right away. And uh, then he showed me some other videos of stuff, and I'm like, okay. But, yeah, he wasn't too happy. I never even told him any of this shit that's going on, you know. It's like, eh, whatever. But, uh, yeah, he found a bunch of videos. So. He goes, did you see this? And I said, no. And he's like, yeah, well, look at this. Wasn't this to your friend? And I said, well... Um, people are different in life. That's why when, when you're, you're asking pointed questions at me about what something means in the Bible or my understanding of a specific thing that would be a concern of a Mason or an Eastern star, that's why I told you to pray about the bridal chamber because whether or not you have that in your life, in your future, will not be the one of Christ, but of your own making for your future. That's another misconception that uh, the Illuminati perpetuates is um, the marriage of Christ has already happened. The... Um, adopting of the ones that aren't of Christ is more accurate. Cleaning them up to become children. They, we are his children that he's cleaning up to accept into his house. Not the bride. And there is a difference. And that's... Um, whether you get that for your future or not literally depends on how you treat people today. So that's true. The pleasures you receive in the future is what the seeds you are sowing. And the further you ignore God actually wanting to love and give you things, the longer it is going to be take for you to understand the steps you're trying to skip to get them. So if you don't listen to your heart and what he's telling you in there to do or say, and I do, and I know you don't pray about that, well, then you're, it's going to take you longer to receive pleasures from God instead of having to work harder for setting yourself back. I've been trying to explain this to you in the nicest way possible, but you don't seem to think, and I'm not saying you don't think, you don't seem to think that my knowledge, advice, um, is valuable to listen the first time, but to actually go deeper into a question that is between you and God. So basically, you're asking me to play God in that extreme. I can't tell you what your future holds for you. You're in control of that. You see where I'm going with that? That's what people think, too. They think, well, there's no relationships in the future, so we're just going to screw everything all up right now and raise hell. And that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. You're throwing away your future. You're making it harder for you to have pleasures in the future because you're going to have to be working towards getting them like we're working now. Literally. By me showing my friends around me in my community um, really how to do things right. 
oh yeah, they hated on me, but they love me too. Like my friend's brothers both like me, but by me not being wrong in my heart and in my mind and had dignity and acted like a lady, like I don't bend over like a hoe, you know, these type of things. You know, it's just the way I'm telling you like it is. I'd rather talk to the women than hanging with the guys and, you know, these type of, I mean, I like talking to guys. I'll talk to you, but, um, it's still kind of an un uncomfortable thing in a sense. I would prefer there to be girls around too and, um, like talk to guys a little bit and then go talk girl stuff or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a unisex, um, channel here. Uh, and I've never been, uh, uh, Una Hart person. I've, uh, always gravitated towards a family value situation. So that's really, um, morals, you know. The Ten Commandments, the Seven Deadly Sins. Here I go again. Look them up. And I, I'll close this out. I up my game. Let's up yours. I want to hear you say, I'd rather lose my soul than lie. I would rather lose my soul than lie. Or not have faith or not love other human beings. Even the mean ones I love. You, I, I've been mean. I can still be mean, real mean, but I don't want to be. So. Okay, I'm going to let that go. Um, I do love you all and have a really good weekend. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, if anybody knows of any good parables for a, a gentleman that lost his son, um, one of his sons, but, um, uh, but I'll look him up. I will. Um, yeah, it was just good to see a friend uh, stop drinking and clean up. And even through the sorrows, we got to keep going strong because it, we all know it's not easy, so, but yeah, it was good. He stood outside the window while I was cooking and then went in to see Doug, and it was really, really good to see somebody clean and still loving God and doing things the right way in life to be the example for his family. And, uh, yeah, that's when I get proud of him. You see, <laughs> when I say I'm proud, that's where I'm proud like that of other people. Sure, I am. So, okay, make me proud, and I hope I make you proud, and I love you. Have a good night. Talk to you soon. Later. If I go, oh, I suppose, you know, if I use my peace sign, they've used it against me. That's so disgusting. You actually trying to stop a part of me by making it wicked, making me appear wicked. So, um, if I do do it, um, it could be out of habit, but I love you. And if I do do it, maybe I'll just start doing it again and let them attack me because um, if they want to, I guess they're just going to find any reason to take snippets of anything I say and do whatever they want. And, but um, I do believe that there's more than one way to skin a cat. And God will show me that way. So I believe that I do have faith. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.